Uh, my name is Vicky and I'm a software engineer at Cisco Systems. As a software engineer, I try to use new technology to help solve business problems and a lot of that means to prototype applications. I try to develop new features for, uh, for applications and try to find new ways of using technology to solve business problems. The best part of my job is that I get to play with new technology. Um, I'm a total nerd at heart, so I love just playing around with new stuff. And then I also get to see how that relates to uh, an actual business, and Cisco is a really big company, so I get to see how that translates, how my job skill translates to actual business value for them. And as part of that, I get to go on many conferences, so I uh, get to learn a lot about uh, different technologies from different people in the, in, in the industry, um, so they're quite nice about that. I studied computer science at University College London, also known as UCL. Um, I studied computer science because I really loved understanding how things work um, from a very young age. Whether that, that was either how maths worked or how physics works, I was really interested in these things. And when I was applying for university, I felt like I enjoyed um, learning about computers the most, and that's why I decided to pursue that option. Um, going into it, I had no idea how to program. I'm not, no, I wasn't very good at programming when I first started. So, in the four years that I spent at UCL, it's been a, a big, big challenge to get myself up to, up to date with um, computer science and programming. Um, but I've really enjoyed the challenge that it uh, that it gave me, and also got to meet a lot of great people at UCL. So I definitely wouldn't want to go anywhere else, um, and I've definitely made the right choice. I think. Uh, doing, applying for graduate applications is really difficult and if anybody is going through that, I really just, my advice to them is just to stick, stick through it because at the end of the day, when you do get your first grad job, life will be a lot, a lot more e easier for you but that initial process is just, it, it is worth the pain to go through it. Um, luckily, when I, when I was uh, interviewing for these graduate jobs, I, had, I told my interviewers that I had stamina um, and that made things a lot more easier, so if that's something that you're worried about, you should just approach that. I think a lot of recruiters are very sympathetic and understanding. So do do do, do that. When when I when I was um, in high school I decided that I'd close off a lot of doors very early on because I had stamina and I knew that I wouldn't be able to do certain things or pursue certain things because of it. But I think now when I'm at, uh, in the job that I am, I kinda of realised that that I, sh I shouldn't have done that. I, I think even if you're a, even if you're a young person, you shouldn't you should never ever decide to close off any kind of doors, and you should basically leave all opportunities open for yourself. And that's because when you get to an age like 16, 17, where you do need to start making um, university applications or something at A levels, there's a lot of help out there, and people can help you get to those places. Um, and there's there's no reason why you shouldn't try to get there. Because I think there's, I've seen a lot of examples where people have rather overt standards, but they still are in very good jobs and they do stuff that which I, I, which I never thought that I could do when I was young. So I definitely think that you, should never, you shouldn't close any doors too early and you should definitely try, try everything out that you want to do. And if you get, you get to a point where you're struggling to make that step into, your, into accessing those opportunities, then there is help out there, either from people that stammer or uh, other places that can help make you help that choice and make, help you make that transition over uh, to, to where you want to be. So I definitely think just be, be confident, be, just look, look, look for help. People, people will help you if you ask for it. I think that's the one thing I, I didn't do when I was younger. So I was pretty much alone and didn't really ask for any help. Um, but I think that's one thing I kind of regret and hopefully uh, students in the future won't make that kind of mistake. I think he'd be quite shocked um, as to like one the fact that I'm sitting here doing this video, I think that's a massive, massive thing that I don't think I would have ever been able to talk about um, stammering to anyone. Because when I was 13 years old, I distinctly remember going on YouTube and like looking for help about stammering. And when people stammered in those videos, I, I closed the video because like, I couldn't hear, I couldn't hear uh, stammering because I thought, wow, this is, how, this is how I sound. So I just completely shut myself off for like several years and tried to completely avoid it. Um, so now that I'm sitting and giving this video, I think you'd be quite proud to know that I've gone from there to here. And yeah, in general, I think there's a lot of things I've been uh, that I've been man that I managed to do, which I didn't think I, I could do when I was at that age. So I give a lot of uh, public talks now. I give a lot of demonstrations at work.
but explain a lot of things to, to a large group of people. And I'm able to do that in a pretty good way. Uh, there is a lot of nervousness and anxiety around that still, but um, that's something I'm, I'm, I'm able to manage. And I think the 13 year old self would be happy to know that I've found ways or grown or, uh, or accumulated some kind of strength to be able to be, a to be able to give that kind of presentation. So I think, yeah, I think you'd be happy about the amount of progress like, that can be made or, or that was made. And hopefully to other 13 year olds listening to this, they would be, they could be aware of the fact that you can make these steps and you can make these, uh, you, you can make this kind of progress towards getting to where you want to be. When I'm ever since a young, young age, I've I've always found ways to over, to overcome my stamina, but always in a very in a very negative way. So I would I wouldn't go to things. I would avoid talking. I would avoid on make excuses to not go somewhere. And that to me was a was a relief at the time. But it's actually quite negative to be to be doing those things. Um, and so now the challenge that I kind of or not the challenge, but the approach that I have to to situations like that is how can I stand more freely or still not hide my stamina but still go to certain events which I wouldn't normally go to. So I think it has held me back for a long time and I've kind of I've kind of understood that it's not a good thing. And I think now is now when I'm 22 I don't want to be held back anymore. I don't want to hold myself back anymore because of my stamina. So I'm trying to approach a trying to devise a new way of approaching things where I can just freely talk, um, just stand freely and still go to what I, to what I what, what I go to. At, at the end of the day, life's short. Life's too short to worry about these kind of things and you should just go for it. So yeah.